Am I the a-hole for agreeing to walk my sister down the aisle? When I was 14, my mother died giving birth to my now 20-year-old sister, Elise. My father blamed Elle and started excessively drinking. At 14, I basically became the main caretaker of my three siblings. My aunt and a few family friends were able to help out, but the most they could do was bring us groceries and handle inheritance. For the next four years, I paid a babysitter for when I was at school and took care of my siblings for the rest of the day. When I graduated high school, I decided against college and immediately took up a part-time job. My dad was almost never in the picture. I fell into a heavy depression and almost died of overdose three times. I knew he wanted to be involved. I tried to help him as much as I could, but it hurts to watch. When Elise was around a year old, she started learning to talk and started non-stop calling me Dada, and it broke my heart in so many ways. I tried to get her to stop at first, but eventually I stopped. I reasoned that if she saw me as her dad, then I was doing something right. When I was 19, my dad overheard me helping Elise with her reading and she called me her dad. He blew up in both of us. That I was trying to take his place and she doesn't deserve to be a part of this family after she killed her mom. I decided right then and there that I was done trying with him and used my inheritance and my aunt's help to move me and my siblings out into a small apartment. It was so sudden I guess it snapped him into reality. It's been over a decade since then and he's now gotten sober. A few years ago, he decided he wanted to form a bond with Elise. She was hesitant, but agreed. Elise is now engaged and is in the middle of planning her wedding. We've always been very close, so I knew I'd at least give a speech. But when she approached me to ask if I'd be the one to walk her down the aisle, I was overjoyed. I was at a planning dinner last night when I joked that I need a nicer suit now that I'd be on the aisle. Everyone laughed, but my dad just looked confused. He asked what amount. When Elise cut in and explained that she wanted me to walk her down the aisle, since it felt right because I always walked her to school every day her entire life. Aunt and my other siblings thought it was sweet, but my dad and grandma pulled me aside later to tell me that they understood where Elise was coming from, and they didn't blame her. But I should have rejected the offer because it's traditionally a fatherly role, and I know how hard my dad has been working to be a good father to Elise. I told them I'd think about it. A few days have passed and my grandma and some family friends have called me every day telling me I'd be the a-hole to take this away from my dad. Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. Tell your dad and grandma that, traditionally, a man accepts responsibility for their children and doesn't blame them for things out of their control. Traditionally, men don't become alcoholics and force children to become parents. Tell them that, traditionally, it falls on a person whom the bride wants. I forgot to add, Opie, you are an amazing person, and you should definitely walk down your daughter on her special day. Family isn't just biological, it's who you choose. This, print this out and hand it to them. Not stay home, he never was a father to her. They already explained themselves, it's a fatherly role which she did for her entire life while he was a drunk loser hating her. Not stay home. Where the heck was grandma and these family friends when dad was living at the bottom of the bottle while you raised your sister? It is your sister's day and her decision. She chose you and you should honor her wishes. It's not on you to help whitewash your father's horrible parenting or his emotional mistreatment after your mom died. Exactly. Dad shouldn't get that honor when he blamed an innocent child for something that wasn't her fault. Opie pretty much was the parent from the get-go. Not the least that his father lost his wife, but Opie lost his mother at 14. He stepped the heck up when his father couldn't. He deserves to walk his sister down the aisle, and she deserves to have him walk her. Not stay home. Blaming a child for the death of their mother in childbirth is seriously abusive. The people with their ridiculous opinion that your dad is owed a walk down the aisle took no action to the point where a 19-year-old had to set up a household to keep his siblings safe. That they are getting involved now to protect the interest of the abuser shows they are terrible people. A few years ago, your father decided he wanted to form a bond with your sister? No. That's your call at this point. He doesn't get to just decide he is ready. He was awful her entire childhood, and now his wants are irrelevant. He does not get to have any expectation beyond what your sister is willing to allow. He should be down on his knees thanking her for any chance she is willing to give him. 
In fact, if you allow a selfish, entitled man to walk your sister down the aisle to be given priority over what your sister wants, you would be the a-hole. Your father may not be drinking, but he is still prioritizing his needs over those of your sister without any concern about her emotional well-being. Her wedding should be a day of joy for her. Her focus should be on starting a new life with someone that she loves and who loves and respects her. She should not be dreading walking down the aisle on the arm of someone who makes her feel like an unwelcome murderer for years, instead of sharing the moment with someone who loved and supported her. Next story. Am I the a-hole for how I reacted to my niece saying her dream job was to be a trophy wife like me? My niece is 17, so she started thinking about her career slash university. Yesterday, the family was asking her if she had decided what she wanted to do with her life. She told them her dream job was the same job as my job. Everyone assumed she meant she wanted to work in marketing because that's what I'm currently doing. My niece said that's not what she wants to do, and she wanted to be a trophy wife. Admittedly, this is a sore spot for me, because a lot of my extended family went from treating me like someone who had worked hard to get to where I currently am, to a glorified trophy wife the second I got married. My parents did call her out for what she said, but my niece said her dad said that's what I was. I got annoyed, and I ended up calling my brother-in-law a prick and telling my niece I didn't think it was a realistic dream for her. My sister is upset with me for what I said to my niece and claims that her husband was only joking. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. Let's face it, your sister is upset because she and her husband got caught bad-mouthing you and are covering their embarrassment by getting mad at you. What they should be doing is apologizing to you for talking crap about you behind your back. As far as what you told your niece and your brother-in-law, it was entirely appropriate. What did your sister expect you to say? That they were correct and what they said was fine? Her husband was not joking. I was just joking is the mating call of the a-hole when they get caught. Yeah, this is a total Darvo situation happening here. 17 is old enough to know when you're being absolutely rude as hell. I'll stay home. I was thinking this. A little kid just parrots stuff. But a 17-year-old has enough awareness to know trophy wife equals second marriage to a bimbo equals good to look at. Dumb but generally harmless woman. I think a lot of teens don't know what they want. So they see someone who marries up financially as a good idea. But I would think they would say I want to marry a rich guy not to be a trophy wife. I definitely knew girls in high school who were unashamed to admit that their life goal was to become a trophy wife. Genuinely proud to aim for nothing other than marrying a guy with money for them to spend. I can't imagine being content with being a leech. Not day hall, and I would have been sorely tempted to say, oh no, honey, you have to be pretty for that. But that would not have been a kind or mature thing to say. That is pretty much what she did say. I don't think that's a realistic dream for you. If Nies was in her 20s, I'd say it would be fine to use that as a retort. But since Nies is only 17, it is likely just repeating what her parents say that might be a bit too harsh. Next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for calling the police on my brother for taking my car? I, male 16, have a brother, male 28, who still doesn't have a car or job. He lives with me, my mom and dad. I got my permit, took my driving test, and got my license this year. My brother actually knows how to drive and used to use my mom's car, but after getting into an accident with it, she took his privileges away. Ever since I got my license, he's been begging me to use my car and I always say no. The reason I don't want him to use it is because I don't want him to crash it. Also, it belongs to me, and I don't want anyone else using it. About two weeks ago, he asked me if he could take my car to go pick his friends up. I told him no. My brother has anger issues and can be scary at times, and he started yelling and swearing at me. I was scared, but still said no. Fast forward to the next morning, I saw my car keys missing. I immediately called my brother and asked him. I said yes, he took it, and that he promises he'll bring it back to mint condition. I told him I don't care, and I just don't want anyone else using my car in general. After I hung up with him, I thought about calling my mom and dad, but I was furious. I let my anger and frustration get the best of me and called the cops. 
I told the cops what happened and gave them my license plate, plus where my brother was at, and his friend's address. They arrested him and brought him to the local police station, and my mom had to come pick him up. My mom was pissed and yelled at me when she got home and took my car keys for the time being. My dad was upset too when he got home. They said I was crazy for calling the cops on my own brother and I could have sent him to jail. I don't feel bad and I hope he learned his lesson. Am I the a-hole? Excellent. With his anger issues, he needs to know you'll call the cops on him. You likely just made all of your lives safer from his anger or stealing. You need to save money your parents or brother can't find or know about, so you can get out of there as soon as possible. Not stay home. Not stay home. And bravo, kid. You are a superior boundary setter. Sounds like you need to be that with your family. Well done. No, you wouldn't have sent your brother to jail. He would have done that all to himself by stealing. Surprise, surprise, that's a crime. You're not the a-hole and shame on your parents for defending your brother's deplorable, entitled behavior. I'm sorry that your family sucks. They're enablers, aka really bad parents. The man is 28 for heaven's sake. And the mom stopped letting him use her car because the brother wrecked it. So, hope he's supposed to just suck it up if that happens to his car? Why? Because it's not his car. That's why the brother wasn't charged. The OP has no legal standing to charge him with theft. He should have called the car's legal owner, their parents. Something even admit to, but didn't because he was angry. Not stay home. He threatened you and then when that didn't work, he stole from you. And you treated him like a thief who threatened you. You had to do what you had to do to protect yourself and establish your boundaries. How have things been since those two weeks? Do you feel threatened by him or your parents? The house felt tense for the first couple of days, but my parents seemed to be letting it go. I still don't have my keys back though, and I'm scared to ask them. My brother only speaks to me when he has to. Like I said, he's kind of scary, so I've been feeling on edge. I don't think he'll do anything though, but he definitely let me have it when he came back home with my mom that day. Last story is titled, Am I a hall for interrogating my wife after she hid her extra income? Me, 33, and my wife, 28, are married for seven years. We have two kids, four female and two female. My wife is a stay-at-home mom after our first daughter, as there were lots of complications with her pregnancy. I make just enough money and my income goes to joint bank account and my wife makes the budget. Our house is my wife's grandma's that was built in 80s, so we're redoing it little by little and money is always tight, but we make it work. After our second daughter, my wife doesn't have complications anymore, even the problems from first pregnancy went away. So we're doing better financially for the past year and has started a college fund for the kids. My wife started a vegetable and fruits farm in our yard and roof and is extremely good at it. She made a lot of money out of it. And to the issue now, a few days ago, I woke up early one morning and saw my wife putting the little one in the stroller and leaving. I tried to call her, but she couldn't hear me. After she left, I opened a tab to see her location, but she left her phone at home and there was no way of contacting her. I saw a message from the bank about a deposit in her account, which I didn't know she had. She came back around 7, which is when I usually wake up, but what struck me wrong was she came in through the back door and told me she was in the backyard. I started asking her why she was lying, and that I saw her leaving the house at 4 in the morning. And what is that extra money she deposited in her account? She denied it and we had some back and forth and I was getting late for work, so I left. When I came back, she acted like nothing happened and I started asking her a question about where she went again. She got angry and told me I'm an a-hole for interrogating her and she doesn't have to tell me about her whereabouts. I was shocked as this is the first time I've ever heard her talk like this. Erased her voice. Even the kids were shocked. I didn't say anything afterwards and she's still angry and hasn't talked to me. Am I the a-hole for questioning her? Now for the comments. I'm going with not the a-hole because if my partner suddenly started acting like that, I'd be suspicious too and I'd ask for answers. However, I want to suggest something you might not have thought of. As a woman, I was taught to have a separate bank account for my partner, which held emergency funds. This account should be kept secret and the amount should not be disclosed to the partner. 
This is because historically a lot of women have stayed in bed, even dangerous situation, because they were financially dependent on their partner. Women have died in situations like this, so many women are taught to have secret emergency funds. If this is the case for your wife, please try to understand that this isn't about you. It doesn't mean she thinks you'd hurt her or leave her, and it doesn't mean she plans on leaving you. But there's a sense of safety and security that comes with knowing you have an escape route, if, God forbid, it's ever needed. Again, I have no idea if that's the case with your wife, but it might be, and in that case, I wouldn't ask any more questions. Just let her have her safety net, even if you don't think she needs one. I was taught the same. My husband was not happy about it until I told him how much I had saved. This account is at least 20 years old now, and we've bought cars, a house, and done renovations from my money. I don't care about the account. I'd be more worried about her taking your kid out at 4 a.m. and not telling you where she is taking the kid. That is a red flag to me. We always discuss our children and where we take them. This is what is really bugging me. Where the hell are you taking a toddler at 4 a.m. when the other parent doesn't know? If my kids wouldn't sleep, I would at least leave a note. Sometimes I would lie about going to a fancy coffee because I wouldn't get their father one, but that is my treat for being up and letting him nap. Honestly, not stay home. You're asking legit questions, and she's lying to you. It's not like it's an unfounded accusations. You saw her do it. Yeah, but it looks like she doesn't want to answer. My doubt is should I have left it at that instead of pushing. No, you don't do what she did to your spouse. If it was nothing, she would have answered. You might want to hire a PI and find out. The fact that she hasn't talked to you in days is even more troubling.